So I already have a piece that I started on, and it's it's way more stable. I can actually pick it up and hold it. If I were to do that with this, it's just going to fall, right? It's so wet. I can save that if I want. But so this is more the consistency you're going for. And so when I squeeze it with my fingers, I can leave indentations really easily. I refer to that as cheese hard. It's like squeezing a brick of cheese. It's indents really easily. So the one thing, another thing you have to pay attention to when you're working with your clay is you want it to be all the same consistency when you're building on top of it. And so, but there is some wiggle room because I can't build this entire vessel with really wet clay because it's just going to collapse on me. And so there's a little bit of a dance that has to happen. And so you have to let your clay set up a little bit. And then oftentimes, usually what I'll do is I'll cut a thin piece of plastic off and I'll put it right around this edge so that all of this firms up, except for this edge is super wet or, or barely wet. Um, and so that way you can keep building and having the structure. So the reason that I'm telling you that you want your clay the same consistency or close to the same consistency is because if I let this dry out uh, any more, and if I try to put this wet clay on top of dry clay, it's going to crack. And that's because when clay dries, it shrinks. And so if I already have some clay here that's super, that's dry, that's like leather hard and, and barely bends, and then if I put wet clay on it, likely it's going to crack because this clay has already gone through a lot of shrinkage versus this clay has gone through no shrinkage. And so there's a, there's a, there's wiggle room. And so there's room for it to be like this. This is cheese hard and I can put white clay on top of it and it won't be a problem. But because now I'm working with slightly different consistencies of clay, my scoring becomes that much more important. So this, I'm no longer scoring with this. I'm, I'm using my cleanup tool to score with. And you also want to score fairly deeply. And so when you score, you want to score in at least two different directions. And you want to be pretty generous with your score lines. Don't be stingy because you want your clay to stick. And then, of course, don't forget to slip as usual. And again, I'm just using my paintbrush as a tool just to lay on the slip. I'm not painting the slip on. And so I try to make my coil as uniform in thickness as possible. And then don't forget to push it down. And blend it together. So right now, I am not concerned with all my serrated rib lines, and uh, you also, so neither should you. So don't worry about your serrated rib lines. Um, right now, they're actually kind of helping. My, my clay is still pretty wet, and they're helping to dry it out, and so that's really helpful for me right now. And so also, because I keep using my uh, template on the piece, I keep messing up the surface anyway. And so it, at this point, it doesn't pay to be a perfection with your surface. Basically what you want to do is just get the shape of your vessel, follow the shape of your template as much as possible. Um, and you worry about the serrated rib lines later in the process. So I'm pressing pretty hard on this outside edge, and so you'll notice that I'm cradling the inside here so that I don't distort it too much. And so after every coil, you want to make sure it still fits your tempo. And mine's not fitting very well. And so I need to 
lift it up. So I lift, with both hands, I push it together and lift it up. And so I'm using, I'm contacting almost half of the vessel as I do this. And if I lift it up too much, it's not a big deal. I can push it right back down. And I'm going to lift it up just a little bit more. And again, I'm really paying attention and I'm putting this bottom corner into the vessel. And so that seems to be fitting pretty well. So when I'm doing this, I'm always, always, always paying attention to this bottom edge. And then once I'm satisfied that that fits, then I'll draw my attention up, uh, up to this outside part and then make it fit a little bit better. Okay, so when I'm doing this, I might only get up to about here because again, this is super squishy now, I'll, this play that I've added. This is fairly firm on the bottom. Um, it's not super firm, but this whole thing is super squishy and it's going to distort really easily. So if I build to right here and let the whole thing set up, then I'm going to be more successful in following my template and having it not flex. So um, if this, so we're going to pretend I got a little bit further along and I'm going to let it set up a little bit. So I'm just going to take some plastic, dip it in water so that it will stick to my clay, and I'll just wrap this top portion up in plastic, just like this. And so that will keep this top part more moist. Then you can set it out in the sun for a little while, maybe five or ten minutes, and then you can um, keep going on it. So this one, you can see it's still, it's a hair squishy, but this stuff down here is not squid hard. It's not very squishy at all. And so this is really holding its shape well. And so now I have, to, I need to make sure that it still fits in the template. So I'll have to bend it around to make sure it still fits. And so where it doesn't fit here, I'm just pushing the clay out from the inside to get that shape. And again, I'm really focusing on this. I'm making sure that's really going into the bottom corner of my vessel. One way to fix your vessel is you can, if, if you're having a hard time pushing it out, making it fit, the template, you can always use a paddle and you can use it outside or inside. And right here, it's kind of has a bump on me, so I'm just going to paddle that back into shape. So one thing you want to work on is to not have all these coil lines showing. I have them showing on the inside of my vessel. You can see them here and there, and you can also see them in places on the outside of my vessel. So I'm going to work to get rid of those coil lines. And so right now, you'll notice I'm not scraping away, I'm just compacting my clay particles. And so I'm going at this from two different directions, and I'm going at a diagonal to really try and get rid of those coil lines, because you don't want those to pop back out as you're working on your vessel or to, for them to be um, problem areas. So just take some time and compress your clay particles. Inside and out.
And so you'll notice again that I'm cradling this vessel with my other hand on the other side because I'm pushing in pretty hard. I'm being fairly aggressive with this. I, again, I'm trying not to scrape away the clay. I'm just trying to compress it and get rid of any of those coil lines. So again, since this is set up on me a little bit, this is a little wetter than cheese heart. It squishes pretty nicely. Um, but it's still a little bit drier than this clay that I'm going to put on there. So again, I really need to make sure I do a good job of scoring. And so I'm going to score pretty deep. Once you reach a certain point and your vessel is fairly stable, this is a hair on the squishy side really to be doing this with, but you can start to speed along your process a little bit and I'm going to show you one of those tricks. So I'm rolling out a pretty big coil, this is pretty juicy. And then I'm going to turn it into a smiley face. Then I'm going to karate chop it, flatten it out, and I'm going to make it the same thickness as my vessel. And so now, the great thing about this, this coil, it's, it's kind of a combination between coil and slack wood. It's because I had a smiley face, it goes with the curve of my vessel. I can make it curve in, or I can make it curve out. I want it to curve in. If I were to have made my coil straight up and down, I'll show you what that would look like. It doesn't work as well. So when I put it on, it just goes straight up and down. It doesn't curve with my vessel. And so that's why starting with the smiley face allows it to curve with your vessel. And so I got lucky and I have too much. So I'm just going to cut this at a diagonal because it's a lot easier to attach. And so what I mean by that is in order to get these two pieces to attach, all I have to do is add a little slip here and then push down. If I push down here, it will attach. Versus, it's really difficult to attach two straight pieces of clay and you, 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 sl you add slip and then you push them together. But almost always you end up with a thin spot where you attach them. Versus this is much more simple. So now again, I can't forget to push down my foil so that it's really coming into contact with my clay wall. And and it looks like right here it's going to fit my vessel pretty well and here it's not going to fit very well it doesn't fit there but it fits pretty well so i'm going to go ahead and fix that so again use your serrated rib to blend your coils together So this is where it doesn't, this here is where it's not fitting my template vessel. This is a really good trick. I, it's so wet, I could easily choke it in and make it fit. But I want to show you another technique. So when your vessels get lopsided, you can dart out the shape. And so basically, right here, I'm going to dart out a triangle shape. So I'm just going to simply take that away. If I take out too much clay, it's not a big deal. I can put it right back in. Um, or if I dart out too much, it's easy, it's still wet enough, it's easy to push it back into place. And so that looks pretty good. So whenever you dart your clay, because I could do this with a whole vessel. If this whole vessel is lopsided of this direction, I could take out a triangular dart all the way down. Right now it's really wet. All I have to do is score and slip. 
But if I were to dart a huge area out of here, I'd have to use this for scoring, do a really good job of scoring, and then always, always use plenty of slip no matter what, and then squeeze it together. And then if I had to make this dart all the way down to the bottom, I would want to do a super good job of scoring this whole dart inside and out. And so I would do that all the way to the bottom. And then I'd add a welding coil because your clay down here is a lot drier and it's not going to want to join together as readily. And so that's why it's important to do all that scoring there and to add a welding coil. And so your welding coil will go on the inside and the outside and then you just blend it in. And so, because I don't want this coil to show, I'm going to just push it in and compact it. And so those score lines become very important because part of the clay that's weaving these together is the clay that's going into that score line. Because at some point I'll be scraping some of that away and that won't be holding it together as much anymore. And so then obviously you blend it together on the inside as well. So sometimes it becomes difficult. Like I need to blend my coil to this bottom, the bottom vessel on the inside, which I haven't done yet. Sometimes you can't get your tool in there anymore. So you can use your finger or you can use a wood modeling tool, whatever it takes to get your coils to blend together. And I didn't finish blending this, so this also needs it to be blended. And because this coil ended up being a little thick, a little thicker than my vessel, I'm just squeezing it to thin it out a little bit so that it's the same thickness. So I'm not going thin to thick. So it's a little floppy, um, but I have a nice foundation and I'm pretty sure even though it's a little on the floppy side, since I'm so far up the vessel, I'm pretty sure I can just finish the whole vessel without having it set up in between. Uh, you may need to let your setup in between here and there. Um, it just all depends. So again, since I have really wet clay here at the top, I can just use my serrated rib to score with. Okay, so I'll need to choke this in a little bit to make that fit. But my vessel is getting narrower, smaller and smaller at the top, and I'm not gonna be able to fit my hand in here much longer. So before I close this off, I really wanna make sure and clean up the inside of my vessel. So, you know, I'm not going for super amazing. I'm just going for smooth and clean. Uh, I am not using my sponge to clean the inside of this vessel. You could, but I'm not because my vessel is still pretty wet. It's kind of squishy. And so if I use a sponge to clean the inside of my vessel, it's going to get even wetter. And then I'm going to for sure have to let it set up and dry a little bit more before I add to it. So it just depends on how dry your vessel is. If your vessel's closer to leather hard, or maybe just past leather hard, you can use a sponge to clean the inside. And so for sure, so you'll notice, you know, obviously this clay is pretty firm. When I push it, it kind of indents, 
Um, and that's that's good. You want it strong so it can support all the weight that you're putting on the top of this. This could actually be even more set up to where it doesn't thin that when I push on it. And that's good. So you want the bottom of your vessel to be fairly dry and then the top to be wet. And you do not want the bottom of this vessel to get too dry because you don't want this to become start to get ashy or white because then you've got really big discrepancies with what you're working with and it opens it up for complications. And so um, at some point you kind of have to maintain the water consistency of your vessel. If this were a little bit drier on the bottom, I would have to spray it down with a water bottle every now and then just to maintain it. Right now it's a good consistency so I don't want to add any more water to it because then it's going to want to collapse on me. Okay, so once you feel like the inside of your vessel is pretty clean, then you can keep building. And so that's pretty decent. And so again, I'm going to have to choke this in to make it fit my template. When it's, you can always use a paddle to paddle it in. Whatever works for you. And as I'm choking this in, it's kind of thickening this coil. It's making this coil a little bit thicker. So I'm squeezing it and thinning it back out so that it's the same thickness as the rest of my vessel. So again, I'm always making sure to look at the bottom of this, making sure that's always lining up at the foot. And so I have sort of a flat spot here, so I can take my wooden tool and pound that back out. It's wet enough, I can actually just push it out. So the one thing that you never want to do is add more clay onto the top of this. If you are if you have a flat spot on your vessel, like let's pretend this is really flat, the temptation is to score and slip and then add more clay here. Um, that's bad because then you're going to have a really thick spot here and as your vessel dries, it's going to dry inconsistently and you're going to have cracking that's going to happen because as the thin spots dry faster, the thicker spots dry slow, more slowly, and it's gonna crack. And I've seen it happen a lot of times. Oftentimes what happens is students will trap air under there on accident, and the whole thing just blows off. And then it, it looks really bad. So you really need to fix it with a paddle so that you're not, so that you don't create thick and thin spots.